The Bible is not just an ordinary book. It is the living, breathing Word of God. It is an unparalleled treasure containing the very words of life. When we open the Bible, we are not merely reading words on a page. We are encountering the very voice of God speaking directly to us. It has the power to penetrate deep into our souls, discerning our innermost thoughts and attitudes. The Word of God acts as a spiritual knife, cutting through the layers of our being, exposing our vulnerabilities, and revealing the truth about who we are. Hebrews 4.12 beautifully portrays, For the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Moreover, the Bible has the power to convict, comfort, and challenge us. It provides guidance and direction for every aspect of our lives, offering wisdom and insight beyond human understanding. As we immerse ourselves in its pages, we are drawn into a deeper relationship with God, experiencing His presence and receiving His grace. One of the incredible aspects of the Bible is that it was authored by the Holy Spirit. This means that to truly grasp its meaning, we need the Holy Spirit's guidance. Unlike ordinary books, the Bible is spiritual in nature, requiring a special understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit that we can connect with and comprehend the deep spiritual truths contained within its pages. Now, today, I want to look at three different striking Bible verses that are extremely thought-provoking. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, it says, And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Now, let that sink in for a moment. Think about what this means for us. It's not just a mere statement. It's a testimony, a declaration of truth that should shake us to our core. You see, God, in His boundless love and mercy, has given us something truly precious, eternal life. It's a gift beyond measure, freely offered to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. It's not just a promise for the future, it's a present reality. Right here, right now, we can experience the fullness of life in Jesus. It's a life filled with purpose, meaning, and joy that transcends any circumstance or trial we may face. Now let me ask you this. Do you have the Son? Have you welcomed Jesus into your life, allowing Him to be your Savior and Lord? Because those who have the Son have life, abundant, everlasting life that nothing in this world can take away. My friend, have you ever felt like something is holding you back from truly experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promises? Maybe it's the weight of temptation, the allure of worldly desires, or the grip of past mistakes that seem to haunt you. Whatever it may be, know that you're not alone. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, we're reminded that the temptations we face are common to humanity. They're not unique to us. Others have walked similar paths. But here's the key. God is faithful. He won't allow these temptations to overwhelm us beyond what we can bear. Isn't that reassuring? Even in our weakest moments, God's faithfulness remains steadfast. Now, let's talk about what these temptations look like in our lives. Perhaps it's the temptation to prioritize worldly pursuits over seeking God's kingdom first. Maybe it's the lure of material possessions, status, or relationships that promise fulfillment but leave us empty in the end. Or it could be the subtle whispers of doubt and fear that shake our confidence in God's goodness and provision. With God on our side, we have the power to resist them. He promises to provide a way out, a path to victory even in the midst of temptation. So when you find yourself at a crossroads, torn between the desires of the flesh and the call of God, remember His promise. He will show you a way out so that you can endure. My friend, 
If you haven't yet received Jesus into your heart, if you're still living apart from Him, then I urge you to consider this solemn reality. Without the Son of God, there is no life. It's a stark truth, but one that we can't afford to ignore. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. God lays out before us two paths, one leading to life and blessing, the other to death and cursing. Every day we stand at the crossroads of choice, with heaven and earth as witnesses to our decisions. Will we choose the path that leads to life, abundant and full of blessings, or will we stray down the road of death, marked by emptiness and despair? Our lives are a reflection of the choices we've made yesterday and the influence of those around us. Every decision shapes our character and directs our path, either aligning us with God's purpose or leading us astray. It's vital to recognize the power of our choices in shaping our future. Each decision we make today sets the course for tomorrow, paving the way for the life we desire to live. In this world of chaos and confusion where moral compasses seem to waver, we're called to stand firm in our commitment to righteousness. Despite the weightiness of the decision, God implores us to choose life, not just for ourselves, but for the generations to come. It's a call to embrace the abundant life that God offers, to walk in His ways, and to experience His blessings. When we choose God, we choose life because He is the source and sustainer of all life. From the very beginning, God breathed His life into humanity, making us living beings in His image. Recognizing that our lives are a precious gift from Him, our highest purpose becomes living in accordance with His will. Jesus said, If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Matthew 10, 39 We choose life by letting go of selfish desires and living for His sake. Then we can say like the Apostle Paul, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1.21 The choices we make today have an impact on the decisions we will be making tomorrow. They establish a pattern and a foundation for our life. Every decision we make in life is based upon this decision. Today, as we stand at the crossroads of choice, let's choose wisely. To choose the Lord is to choose life. Let's heed the call to righteousness, embracing the divine purpose for which we were created. Let's allow the light of God's Word to illuminate our path, guiding us through the darkness and uncertainty of this world. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 speaks to a profound transformation that occurs within those who follow Christ. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in, the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. In a world where billions profess Christianity, it's easy to forget that Christ himself warned us, saying, Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Matthew 7, 14. He referred to his followers as a little flock, so why is it that despite our vast numbers, the Bible paints a picture of Christians as a small, marginalized group? Romans 6.3 gives us the answer in Paul's own words, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? When a truly repentant believer decides to be baptized, he or she is symbolically baptized into Christ's death. So why this apparent contradiction? It lies in the essence of what it truly means to follow Christ. Baptism into his death signifies a symbolic burial of our old selves, the sinful nature that once defined us. Just as Christ bore our sins and died as a payment for our deserved penalty, we too must crucify everything that characterized our sinful lifestyle. 
When Paul declares, I have been crucified, he's affirming that his sinful self has died with Christ. Essentially, Paul is saying, it is no longer the self or my will that lives. This aligns exactly with Jesus' instructions to those who want to be his followers. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke 9, 23. To deny ourselves and take up our cross, we must surrender our will and entirely commit ourselves to doing God's will. This is at the heart and core of what it means to be a Christian. To confess, it is no longer I who live, is to commit wholeheartedly to doing God's will, to relinquish our self-directed desires and to follow Christ's example of selflessness. Christ lives in me, the Son of God, desires to dwell within us. He lives within us in order to change us from the inside out. We are transformed through His Spirit dwelling within us. This isn't about control, but rather about transformation. When Jesus spoke of living within His followers, He spoke of a deep, intimate relationship through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the key to having the mind of Christ within us. Through repentance, baptism, and the laying on of hands, we receive the Spirit, enabling us to think, act, and speak in alignment with Christ. As we yield to His Spirit, we gain access to His guidance, leadership, and direction. Our journey becomes a reflection of His as we strive to imitate Him in every aspect of our lives. Just as Christ lived in Paul, so Christ lives in every one of His true followers. 1 John 3.24 And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. We remain in the flesh even after repentance and baptism. That means we are still physical. We still have a life to live, things to do, and decisions to make. But we strive to walk by a different standard now. The faith we need is the faith of the Son of God, the very faith that Christ had. Living by everything Christ did and taught encompasses abiding by the laws of God. This is not a burden, but a privilege. For in obedience to God's laws, we find true freedom and fulfillment. And I love that last part that it says, He loved me and gave Himself for me. So I live by faith. Christ's sacrificial death on the cross stands as the pinnacle of love, surpassing any human understanding. His willingness to give Himself for us demonstrates the depth of God's love, a love that knows no bounds, no conditions. It is this love that compels us to live differently, to walk in the footsteps of Christ, and to share His love with others. As we embrace His teachings and emulate His example, we become vessels of His grace and agents of His redemption in a world desperate for hope. What is keeping us away from such an incredible sacrifice just for us to embrace eternal life? Our sufferings, our desires, count for nothing when we truly understand the depth of love that God has for us. In the face of God's boundless love, our temporary trials and fleeting pleasures pale in comparison. Let us not be swayed by the transient allure of this world, but instead fix our gaze on the eternal promises of God. Every soul longs for purpose, for meaning, for fulfillment. Yet, true satisfaction can only be found in Christ, who offers us abundant life and eternal joy. It is time to cast aside our doubts, our fears, and our earthly attachments and to wholeheartedly embrace the life that God has ordained for us. Let us step boldly into the light of God's love, knowing that He has called us by name and destined us for greatness. With His love as our guide and His grace as our strength, there is nothing that can stand in the way of the glorious future that awaits us. Embrace the life of abundance and purpose that God has prepared for you and experience the fullness of His love that surpasses all understanding. God bless you. By subscribing, 
you become a vital part of our mission to spread the word of God and uplift countless lives. Join us in making a positive impact. Hit that subscribe button now.